so uh, i will just continue uh, youtube live stream will start in a while so uh, that's how the dust star dust uh, or dust uh, came into picture the way we explain dust over here sorry i think uh, that was the youtube video so basically star dust or what we call on earth the dust particles they are very thick and we can just uh, uh, carry uh, a handful of dust basically but the actual dust uh, which formed the solar system and everything which was of very minuscule uh, they uh, they were very minuscule uh, smog type dust what it comes out of chimney or uh, the fire uh, wood fire or everything even uh, minuscule uh, very fine than the that dust also sorry so this is how the uh, solar system formed so proto sun was there uh, there was a big bang as you all know a uh, lot of theories are there different theories so out of uh, this supernova and all so uh, gases in the form of a lot of electrostatic pressure and electrostatic forces in picture so it started forming and revolving and rotating basically uh, to form dust particles so it all of a sudden bursted in a way and a uh, lot of pressure was there a lot of electrostatic uh, uh, interactions were there so which formed the dust so thus in further interactions formed small chunks or handful and then it kept on combining planetesimals and then uh, the gravity concept of gravity very center and everything started uh, coming into picture so everything started revolving around this proto sun which was just forming and then uh, our uh, terrestrial and uh, gaseous and everything uh, started forming so the last picture what you see at uh, the last line so this is our sun mercury venus earth mars uh, the asteroid belt then jupiter saturn uranus neptune and then again the pluto or dwarf planet uh, disk basically <clears throat> uh vishnu uh, we will get back to you i have covered that in my slide actually <clears throat> so this is how the what i was explaining just trying to explain that prototype sun and everything rocks and everything was uh, just roaming about here and there and then uh, due to interactions and collisions lot of collision was happening even now somewhere outside the solar system something will be happening uh, because uh, there are many things going on which are unknown to us basically so then uh, thea and all uh, that concept came into picture thea collided uh, with our planet earth which was again forming which was volcanic at that time and that collision uh, earth moon system was formed and similarly all other planetary systems were formed whatever moons are there or whatever uh, twin uh, moving dwarf planets are there okay so what is the difference between comets asteroids and meteorites so uh, again there was a video i'm not very sure whether you will be able to listen to it i will just try to explain uh, so our uh, team member adarsh made this video so i will just uh, skip a bit <clears throat> so basically what he is trying to explain is that uh, what is an asteroid uh, which i have already covered Uh, sorry guys uh, i think some issue is there with the audio today i need to check the settings uh, somehow so uh, so basically what happens is that uh, comets are the pre uh, in a way pre or solar system formation when everything was starting the comets were also formed so comets uh, are of different type and different orbital mechanics is there so some orbits uh, orbits uh, are so so long that it takes 200 years or less than 200 years or even more than 200 years to cover the orbital part so what comet we just saw today or tomorrow might not be seen for decades to come or even our generations to see like heli comet is there and others are there so uh, there are different uh, categorization of comets and meteorites and asteroids so comet is a small body uh, made of ice and dust that leaves a tail uh, of gas and ice as it travels uh, near the sun so basically this is uh, the first images of a comet uh, uh, pic uh, with a tail and the other one is the that of a nucleus basically so it's again a rock icy rock i would say uh, in that way so what happens is that uh, once uh, 
suppose if i am just taking a, raw, a dummy example uh, this is my sun and comet uh, just comes over here and goes again so when it is interacting with the sun comet does not have uh, sorry comet does not have line of uh, light of its own so everything is uh, due to sun just like moon the moon does not have uh, the light of its own or even the earth right so comet does not have any uh, inbuilt light material source so when it comes and interacts the ice and everything all those uh, molecular parts and the material basically shines in the opposite direction of the sun so sometimes what happens is the tail uh, covers the space uh, tail is such a uh, uh, spread across miles and miles basically in between one au or even more than one au so which means that uh, earth and sun whatever distance is there even tail can exceed that one also so that is how long the comet uh, can be so now uh, coming to a meteoroid it's a small rocky part or a uh, part of a parental asteroid or planet uh, whatever collision has happened or will be happening or might be happening now also uh, so it's a small rocky body in space uh, which is a size of from microns or small chunks to 10 meters so a uh, meteoroid is what forms a meteor and then a fireball and uh, then comes and uh, uh, lands on our earth as a meteorite finally so next is uh, asteroid uh, as you have seen asteroid is a large rocky body in space so basically uh, the difference between meteorite and asteroid is just that uh, size is there plus meteorite is not in itself something but just a part of the parent right so if suppose if today i have this earth and uh, if i break it into chunks so that chunk is known as a meteorite nothing else okay so meteorite uh, meteorite and asteroid uh, difference i hope it is clear then meteor is a the light part of when it enters our atmosphere the lighting due to a lot of uh, atmospheric pressure and heat which is generated so that light which emits uh, that is known as a meteor so basically what happens is again i am taking an example so uh, this is our earth this is our atmosphere so suppose if a meteor meteorite uh, passes through our atmosphere but it does not actually land successfully on the earth or maybe it can just bypass our atmosphere and go somewhere else in space if uh, it is still alive i would say or if it is coming over here till the time it is in the atmosphere it is known as a meteor okay so meteor is the light emitted uh, from the meteoroid as it enters the atmosphere it may burn up completely it may might be able to re uh, enter our uh, atmosphere successfully and land on the uh, earth basically that is known as a, a meteoroid so meteoroid is the final version of uh, what we get and what we collect actually so uh, fire fireball is a meteoroid a meteor uh, brighter than the planet venus that is just a comparison of definition just like iu has a definition of planet dwarf planet and all so fireball is much much bigger even it can uh, lit up the night sky as if uh, you are reading a book you don't even need a light so it will look like a daytime uh, you must have seen a lot of videos or even in news channels it keeps on coming that in this particular uh, city or uh, country uh, something has been uh, lit up all, all of a sudden basically Uh, and then uh, basically meteor shower is a slightly misconception uh, meteor shower is an event that occurs during a particular time or month what we call on the calendar month what we call on the earth uh, which is the number of meteors uh, that radiate uh, and when it is passing through our earth is passing through revolving basically revolving around the sun so in the month of october uh, when uh, winter is about to start or something like that so it is in a particular direction in space so at that time whatever leftover meteors are there part of or debris of comets basically they are there small chunks keep on uh, trying to enter our atmosphere in that particular constellation or something so i just want to clarify one thing constellations are again if you have attended our basics of astronomy constellations are nothing but just an imaginary lines right so constellation doesn't mean that uh, all stars are forming some pattern they are just our imagination so sun the sun is very far off similarly betelgeuse is there other stars are there which are forming that particular constellation 
so they are at a million and million of light away far away right it's just that in 2d we are able to see as a constellation so when i say a meteor uh, in the month of october or november or december or april month uh, then what is happening is uh, we are just taking as a constellation as a reference so we uh, call a particular uh, terminology over the radiance basically so the constellation from where the meteor shower starts is the name of the meteor shower typically so like uh, uh, i will give some example persides is there orionid is there orion basically and other stuff is there something like that okay so uh, this is an uh, the second image is an example of an asteroid and then the, this is the oldest one meteoroid uh, i will come to that part uh, what we have found on the earth basically so uh, see uh, asteroids are very difficult almost zero visibility when you see at the night sky even if you go to antarctica or himalayas or any suburbs greenland island of uh, iceland uh, wherever whatever country you go so asteroids have to be discovered of the first asteroid uh, series was also discovered by a telescope when space shuttles and everything concepts were uh, coming up later on or uh, first thing uh, to discover is via telescope only always but however uh, sorry in this case uh, comets are basically uh, very bright uh, they have that tail also at times so it is uh, almost visible and at, uh, in olden days what happened is that uh, in olden days we did not had that much of light pollution there was no concept of electricity at all right we are talking about 1680s also and uh, even prehistoric times also obviously uh, not all of them uh, would have understood okay what this is going to be called in future right so uh, the comet was very much visible maybe uh, with milky way and uh, different stars also not like city area so all these uh, uh, writings are there from the church german church so this is how uh, the event started and they were not able to understand what this comet is so they called everything star star was burning it was a bad luck basically for them so star was burning something bad is going to happen so that's how they have explained everything so in the name of uh, jesus uh, so please uh, keep your blessing and all that stuff so this is how uh, comet descriptions were uh, given over there so now uh, comets uh, basically consists of multiple uh, i would say structure uh, not like asteroid or a meteoroid just a rock it has multiple things so whenever it is coming to a near to the sun it has a long tail otherwise it does not have any tail when it goes far off or outside the solar system or something like that and then there is a coma the uh, the light or the area covering the uh, nucleus the main core nucleus right so uh, so basically uh, it is purely made up of uh, dust rock and ice uh, dirt ice i would say and most of the comets are uh, comets are far up, far away and orbital period is also long so there might be many many uh, comets which we are not even explored or aware of and uh, there are hardly a handful of uh, comets which have been observed and confirmed so around 3553 or maybe approximately uh, have been confirmed so far so uh, now uh, as it uh, the comet approaches the sun it shows a coma and the tail so that's what is shown in the picture right it started show, started as showing as a diffusion and tail and uh, whatever light is there due to heat basically so it builds it on gra uh, gravitational atmosphere so atmosphere is there in case of asteroid and meteorites no such as such atmosphere is formed in that sense so it has its own uh, gravitational atmosphere wherein the ice and the dust are uh, just forming that that particular tail so just like earth moon system or debris uh, around the jupiter mars so it is also forming a kind of a tail in the form of debris so it is believed to be originated from the kuiper belt or cooper belt and the oort cloud so there are different uh, i think i have covered okay yeah there are different uh, types of uh, comets jupiter family which just comes out of jupiter and then uh, revolves around the sun which uh, has an orbit of around less than 20 years again it depends uh, it has long electrical uh, uh, orbit also 
then heli uh, categorization is there which is 20 to 200 years so when last heli comet was seen it was 1986 right so again the orbital uh, uh, time taken to orbit around the sun is very high then we have the comets which are coming via oort cloud also this takes more than 200 years so i don't know who is going to see uh, those comets and when okay uh, so i will have to be a little bit quick because uh, it's in our session there would be many things uh, which we will cover up later on so uh, yeah so this uh, uh, nucleus is basically a core of a comet uh, the rock which i showed you over there the very first picture it consists of rock water ice frozen gases and dust so it is not exactly the ice what you see it is a combination of dust water uh, molecules in a way and uh, everything whatever it carries along with it so there is a possibility that comet has actually made its mark on the earth and it has given the light life form also earlier so uh, so they are the one which are less reflective objects found in the solar system so the size of nucleus is uh, typically less than 60 km so asteroid can be very less and uh, very huge also so uh, coma is uh, the coma part which you are seeing over here is in general uh, made out of h2o molecules and dust so its size across may vary uh, may be larger than the sun 1000 or million uh, kilometers it again depends and uh, it size basically decreases when it crosses the orbit of mars because it is it is carrying as i told earlier a gravitational atmosphere so whatever debris are attracted towards it so everything comes into picture when a long tail is formed then when again it is going far away from the sun uh, whatever orbit it is taking then again it loses all its uh, atmospheric properties at that time so it may or may not happen we uh, we are yet to study all these mechanics so yeah uh, just moving on so asteroids sometimes known as minor planets because they are moving around revolving around the sun so uh, they are rocky airless remnants left over from the early formation of our solar system approximately 4.6 or 4.7 billion years ago but uh, there is a misconception that uh, asteroid are uh, kind of a planet was there or proto planet was there which with the interaction of mars and jupiter it blasted off uh, due to gravity and then uh, the remains are there that is not the case if you combine all the masses of these asteroids the smaller chance they will not be able to uh, what our definition of planet is there it will not even able to form the planet maybe uh, just a small chunk or a minor planet also but still it won't form a planet so that is a misconception so uh, asteroids and planet follow the same path around the sun cycle is obviously different like uh, what is the revolution time of mercury venus earth so similarly asteroid also have what uh, dr stuart also earlier mentioned this was uh, supposed to be an animation unfortunately it is not working so what i'm trying to say over here is that suppose if two asteroids are uh, just going in a straight line or a particular defined path if any heavier object or planet with uh, higher gravity and other forces are there then what will happen is uh, some of the asteroids will behave trying to get attracted towards the uh, that particular planet or what will happen is due to that uh, push and pull of gravity between two planets right what will happen is that particular asteroid will start to wobble and it might even break into chunks that's how the asteroid and everything keeps on disintegrating also at that time <coughs> sorry uh so uh the next one is asteroid size range is typically 100 meter to so small size of a house 2000 km size of a city also or even bigger so they are composed of carbon or iron so uh, earlier also we have discussed carbon caseous is there which does not have a least uh, there are further subcategories i won't go into detail i will have to take a separate session chemical composition or so carbon caseous are there iron and nickel and other materials are there iron and nickel plays a vital role i will come to that also so asteroid belt uh, basically what you are seeing over here right 
is a group of rocks that appear to have never joined to make a planet so basically they could have easily combined into jupiter uh, rather than being a gaseous or towards the mars if uh, that uh, tug of war was not there in picture so that could have made uh, mars more bigger in size or it could have formed some some small uh, more uh, better debris or even combined with series uh, that's how it works basically so meteoroids uh, are interplanetary rocky uh, i mean parental part of uh, asteroid chunks of asteroid which are smaller than 100 meters towards the grain size so even a grain size can enter our atmosphere if it survives which obviously it will not then it is known as a meteorite so if it makes it uh, to a ground uh, it's a meteorite so it's basically a survival of a fittest to be very honest <clears throat> so most of the meteor shower are the result of earth passing through the orbit what i've uh, told earlier through the orbit of a comet which has left debris along its path as you are aware space is totally empty there is no atmosphere nothing is there right so that is the reason why that meteor chunk or whatever debris are there left over by asteroids comets everything remains there or at least uh, they are just moving around there is no atmospheric pressure if i throw a ball it is going in a particular direction so if i throw the ball in our atmosphere it will come down at some point or the other right whereas if i throw a ball in a space it will keep on moving at a particular direction at a particular velocity speed so these are the impact creators i think this one is arizona so uh, meteors are uh, typically rocky mainly iron and nickel as i have told so uh, all this i am skipping as of now so meteorites uh, meteors are old enough uh, 4.5 billion years based on the carbon dating what we do so the carbon dating what we do for trees and other materials works very well for asteroids or even meteorites or even uh, meteorite samples or other things <clears throat> so this is the uh, meteor shower you can just google it out meteor showers onoid is there in the month of october this is approximate date leonid is there and gemini is there gemini basically so quadrant radiance is there what we call technically so there are different uh, type of uh, meteor showers you may or may not see even uh, a guy like me who is living in uh, light pollution city area delhi right so i still i am able to see around 3 to 4 an hour Uh, of uh, the major uh, pasiris is there and oronite is there all these meteor showers so obviously from clear sky you will be able to see lots and lots maybe 20 to 30 or 10 to 15 uh, meteor uh, meteors going on so and uh, one more thing i just wanted to clarify in hindi we uh, call it as a tuta tara right or a shooting star it is not a star so basically uh, the star formation is totally different star are not moving and they will not come uh, very near to our earth like that except for the sun <clears throat> sorry so what happens is that's a conception that uh, okay star was there it is moving from one direction to another that is a meteor shower or uh, what we call it as a meteorite falling or it could be anything so that is a rocky thing which is entering our atmosphere and just Uh, lighting up or burning basically right so that's how we uh, there is a misconception of tuta tara or a shooting star <clears throat> so these are some of the uh, samples uh, which have been shown so they are black rocky uh, carbon caseous very less metallic part or maybe they are rich in uh, iron and uh, nickel content so these are the pieces of asteroids which are known as meteorites which have uh, survived our atmosphere so thanks to our atmosphere thanks to our earth system which have been uh, protecting us for uh, millions and millions of years including dinosaurs and all obviously if a bigger asteroid comes or any such rock or anything hits obviously there is a limit to everything so atmosphere won't be able to withstand all these things so on other planets like even the moon does not have or very minuscule uh, thin atmosphere is there that is the reason A lot of micro meteorites keep on hitting the uh, other planets or uh, the moon also. So how are they uh, different from the Earth rocks? Uh, this I have discussed with Dr. Stewart earlier, but still I am just explaining pictorially. 
so uh, as he mentioned that uh, the earth rocks have gone through a lot of dynamic process so basically what happens is the earlier stages igneous rocks were there everything was burning out right volcanism and everything when the proto earth was there then it cooled down all of a sudden then this age ice age stone age and all that stuff came into picture so earth has gone through a lot of atmospheric changes so weathering of rocks has happened uh, chemical interactions alterations with wind water and other external factors have been there so within soil if suppose a meteorite just enters it is a fresh fall right so then what happens is uh, all the meteorite collectors or government authorities or space agencies they try to collect that meteorite as soon as possible why because obviously they have to understand the composition and everything it is fresh secondly the more you delay it, suppose if a meteorite falls in a on a siberia part which is a remote site which was earlier a remote site i would say so what happens is uh, we won't be able to explore that area so with weathering of rocks rivers and everything rains water so it will mix up with the materials or the uh, uh, what do you call minerals of the soil so it will be very very difficult if i go after 10 years or 20 years or 50 years and find out a meteorite like rock if i even take it in a lab <clears throat> lot of impurities earth impurities will be there and lot of weathering will be there so physical uh, even uh, the physical actually uh, persona will change uh, that is the reason why we uh, i mean scientists always try to collect the meteorites as much as possible earlier so this is the oldest uh, canadian bed rock australia has some some part in africa dating obviously is different so this is more than 4 billion years and maybe the oldest one uh, which is known as the uh, early earth's crust so this has been there so if i compare this rock with all other rocks they will be younger just like on moon uh, we have old rocks uh, or the new rocks uh, comparatively so this is how the comparison is done so this is very vital for scientists to study further <clears throat> so uh, this is a hayden rock uh, sample which are exposed on the earth surface uh, these are the geologic shields of canada australia and africa so this sample of genesis from the side of the earth's oldest uh, rock uh, the casta uh, river in canada again is a sample which has been dated to 4.3 uh, billion year old this is not a gold as you can see uh, see uh, they, they are phyllites and uh, other minerals also in this so this is mercison uh, meteorite which is uh, carbon dated to be around 7 billion year old which is older than our solar system and uh, even the earth so uh, this meteorite uh, was a god gift i would say in jan 2020 astronomers reported that the oldest material found on the earth to date is the silicon carbide particles from this particular uh, meteorite which have been uh, confirmed and determined to be 7 billion year old so this is a recent study or analysis which has been done and uh, which is about 2.5 billion year older than the uh, our earth and the solar system <clears throat> so you can go to this link and uh, explore more about old rocks there are i think 7 to 8 such rocks so uh, asteroid belt so this is uh, our solar system asteroid belt is basically typically between mars and jupiter Uh, so basically sun jupiter and saturn played a vital role in having this uh, asteroid belt so they are rock with sizes greater than 100 meters across which i have already told and then uh, beyond the neptune uh, area it is there so uh, most of the asteroids remain in the asteroid belt between mars and jupiter but few have orbits that cross uh, earth's path this uh, was again explained by dr stuart in the previous session if you have uh, attended uh, this uh, is i am just comparing with the hollywood movie obviously many people are now aware how asteroid belt looks like but still many compare that uh, we won't be able to pass any spaceship like voyager is there or new horizon is there or juno mission is there uh, many think that uh, they they are fake uh, what uh, they were just uh, told that okay they this uh, cassini reached uh, saturn and it Uh, basically was destroyed by our saturn atmosphere many think that asteroid belt uh, is something a barrier for us we cannot even cross it 
so these this is how uh, star wars movies and empire millennium falcon and everything has been shown it looks really exciting it looks very dangerous but it is not the case so all these thing blasting off and sonar and radar uh, radiations and blasting off everything is not technically uh, what happens actually and then uh, this is a attack of the clone basically so they are detecting an asteroid over here something is coming so now uh, sonic boom is there and everything is destroyed within few seconds then some blasts are there and all those things and they land on an asteroid so maybe in future we will be able to commonly land on the asteroid but that doesn't mean that uh, this is how the asteroid belt looks like uh i will share just one thing i was programming something but unfortunately uh, i could not get much time just give me a minute yeah uh, so i'll just uh, reshare my screen just to show you uh, it's not yet completed actually so i hope you are able to see this part right i was just uh, programming something uh, in the morning also so basically uh, earth mercury terrestrial planets are there uh, i have to obviously correct my calculations to show the mass nearer to the earth but this is the asteroid belt suppose so asteroids are not in the same exact uh, linear uh, orbit so one asteroid will be like this elliptical the other one will be like this or like this and distance also and the uh, speed of rotation and everything will vary not all the asteroids will have the same speed just like in planets also so right retrograde motion and everything is there uh, moons are moving in this direction some are moving at a very slow speed or uh, some uh, planets are uh, just taking 1000 200 years or 100 years maybe so something like that uh, asteroid also has a certain uh, speed and uh, the orbit also so orbit is not the same round circle what we see in the 2d like this it is not always the same <clears throat> sorry i have a bad throat today okay so i'm just uh, sharing my ppt deck again mm -hmm. okay so uh, yeah so as per theory jupiter migrated towards the sun and then returned to its current position because of complex uh, gravitational and other forces interaction with the saturn so jupiter played and saturn and mars uh, to a certain extent i would say played a vital role in forming this asteroid belt so it's uh, kinding uh, kind of uh, forming a asteroid basically coming near to the sun then going back gaseous form form and everything so asteroid also had lot of uh, material included <clears throat> so a uh, coloration of the asteroid also like just like meteorites and uh, uh, asteroids also have multiple colors so again i will have to take another session for this one <clears throat> so this is how an asteroid belt or maybe this is just a pictorial representation even wider space is huge and the asteroid belt is also huge in comparison to the distance so any space craft which is traveling and going out of this asteroid belt they just have to deflect a bit uh, with the help of thrusters what they, they have actually just like what you have seen in the videos or live feeds also at times so they they detect okay something a blockage or barrier is coming in between and they just slightly move here and there not like uh, empire strikes back or falcon millennium and all that stuff so uh, that does not uh, happens Aditya, I will come to that part. Uh, I think we have discussed earlier also on how to purchase meteorites. That is not allowed in India actually. Even if someone is uh, se selling you, that is illegal and uh, fooling you around, and unless uh, it has a genuine certificate and lab test uh, reports. <clears throat> so asteroid belt is not what uh, is shown in the movie. What I was discussing. So all these technical details are there. You will be able to find uh, on internet also. so uh, there is an outward distance so the trojan area also is there around the jupiter which due to certain balance act 
they are stuck in that uh, jupiter or near to jupiter uh, or behind the jupiter i would say uh, uh, orbit basically as dr stuart mentioned about the kirkwood gaps so basically uh, jupiter is revolving around the sun and asteroids are also three times uh, resonance is there so if an asteroid makes three orbits at the time jupiter orbits uh, once right so resonance and everything uh, mathematics basically i would say jupiter uh, gravity will kick out the asteroid and then it will form that gap so not everywhere uh, just like on the earth gravity is, uh, gravity is not the same everywhere on the earth so similarly uh, on asteroid also a lot of impact is there push and pull is there uh, somewhere gravity will be weak so basically asteroids are not uh, going in a straight forward direction they are wobbling so it's like like this and uh, moving like this so they may or may not change the path little bit they may deviate from their actual path depending on the gravity and how far it is from the host uh, object or the planet basically so that's what exactly happens why we have near earth object also sometimes these asteroids uh, they uh, basically uh, collide to each other and uh, debris come towards uh, inner planet or go outside we don't know so if anything is going towards saturn and everything then obviously its atmosphere will take care of it <coughs> so asteroid path is more or less the same if i am observing or taking a picture of an asteroid via a telescope right so what will happen is that uh, what will happen is that uh, different pictures in 24 hours or certain set of hours it will give me a uh, image like asteroids are moving in a straight direction compared to the pre my background so if i have a background which is static right in a cinema hall or something i have a static cinema hall uh, show is going on if a person is coming towards me uh, i am sitting upstairs and he is bringing popcorn or pepsi so he is coming via stairs in a straight line i am just giving a ra random example so basically what is happening is that right uh, is moving whereas stars are static stars are more or less the static ones which are there obviously earth revolution and everything happens a lot so by that time asteroid have must have gone somewhere else in the space so this is how this uh, asteroid uh, trail basically looks like in a linear form it uh, simply goes away so the asteroids are the relics uh, we have already discussed uh, discussed uh, to the effects of jupiter and other mass size objects <clears throat> Jupiter's gravity helped uh, shape the asteroid belt. Even today, uh, its uh, gravity is playing a lot of role, and it's depleting the certain ob orbits of the uh, within the asteroid belt. So, a lot of impact is there. So, uh, Lagrange point maybe I will uh, uh, cover in some other. A lot of mathematics is there again. Why, how this angle and everything, all these things are uh, uh, calculated. So, basically, these are the Trojan asteroids which are trapped in. stable points basically where the gravity is very stable in a way between the two host objects or uh, with effect from the sun and the jupiter basically so whenever it is revolving around the sun just like uh, jupiter revolving around the sun so these are uh, typically in between not in between but around the jupiter only at times so this is why trojan basically hidden ones so we don't know we are uh, hardly able to find them or see them via telescope or otherwise mm, okay so basically uh, yarkovsky uh, drift also dr schwartz spoke earlier so that is one of the reasons basically asteroid spin spin is there it is uh, moving around the sun and in between gravity of mars or uh, jupiter so basically at times gravity is weak also so it keeps on spinning just like this not like our earth which is uh, rotating in a uh, tilted axis basically so it's wobbly uh, motion basically so what happens is uh, whenever it is uh, coming towards the sun or the gravity so heat is going on lot of friction is there so what at that time what happens is asteroid will simply go off if the gravity is weak it is uh, able to escape its orbit so it will just shoot out basically or it will just come inside towards the sun or towards the interstellar planets that's how neo also uh, plays a very vital role so smaller particles uh, smaller asteroids basically interact with each other's orbit and uh, that is known as van der waals forces again uh, this 
will be covered in different sessions. <clears throat> so, how we classify asteroid meteorites? Uh, just give me one second. It's already six twenty-three. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, main belt asteroid, uh, which is there between Mars and the Jupiter, then Trojans are there, which are near to uh, the Jupiter, hidden ones. Then near Earth objects are there. So, different sizes are there. Uh, you might be having those news channels saying that uh, today Doomsday is there and this and that is there, but nothing has happened so far. So many news channels we have heard in so many years, right? It can happen. That's why we are studying asteroids. So that is the reason why it is really very important. <coughs> so this is the asteroid compositions. Uh, similar composition is there with meteorites. Classification is different based on the composition. C-type chondrite is there, which is very minimal uh, uh, iron or metallic part. Silicates mostly, silica. And they are very dark in appearance. So there are different colors also. And these are the one of the most... Uh, these are the common ones and these are the most ancient ones. Why? Because when not even planets were there not forming, these debris uh, were uh, rotating and uh, revolving around the sun, right? So they did not have much of interaction or impurities from other planets to asteroids. So if uh, Earth is rotating, right, and revolving, so if uh, asteroid is nearby, but it does not interact with the Earth soil or atmosphere, that asteroid remains intact that asteroid contains a very vital uh, chemicals or materials or dust particles which tell us how old our solar system is or what is the composition, what was the composition. So it is not an impurity since it has not interacted. Just like the moon and the earth, they have interacted and they uh, kind of collided and uh, head, head on collision was there. So a lot of properties are similar of earth and the moon. So these, uh, this is an old map, a uh, lot of updates keep on coming of uh, the impact sites, more on asteroid impact sites, these are the ones. So uh, this is very important, apart from Siberian uh, impact. Chicks Club is when the KT line and the dinosaur age basically ended, that's what our uh, analysis says. So a lot of drilling uh, was done, this is a diamond drill, and it was uh, drilled just like petroleum we drilled, right? So this is how the Chicks Club uh, basically looked like. And geologists and scientists were very amazed to see this part, how this uh, such a geological formation can happen, actually. So at that time, what happened is that uh, they explored further. They invested money with approval from government and all. They found the crux and everything. And this is the KT line uh, fossils and everything. So that's how they know uh, dinosaurs, 99.9% .9 must have uh, extended because of uh, this uh, impact. It could be a heavy rock, uh, you wondered. I will come to the stats part. So this is a meteorite crater, which I am really fascinated about and I want to visit this place, Arizona. This is still intact, uh, new human, human uh, civilization around it, no plantation, not much is there. And anyone can go with permission over there. <clears throat> so it was equal to this bombardment was uh, equal to 133 Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, basically. And uh, this is the Siberian Tumska, basically, impact. It is a remote area uh, where exploration is very difficult. So in 1908, basically, uh, an estimated diameter of 5, 50 to 100, just 50 to 100 meter, that is what uh, it can make an impact. So uh, where it impacted, 40 miles from that, people heard the boom the sonic uh, in other countries also, plus uh, 40 miles ahead, apart uh, from the where the collision actually happened. A uh, lot of people were impacted, a lot of window panes and everything. A lot of videos are there on YouTube. You can search out. And this is just to show where the burnt part is there of the tree. These are the rings. And all of a sudden, drastic change in the structure of the trees started happening. That's what the impact of an asteroid is. So this guy, he was an explorer, I would say. Uh, he made, uh, in 1927, a journey along with some more team members, Leonide uh, Curie. So he explored that area. He took some observations. He provided to all other scientists and explorers at that time. So basically, this is how it looks like after 100 years now. So no plantation, nothing is there. 
that rock was 200 feet wide and a uh, lot of speed was there a lot of high temperature because from atmosphere it was carrying a lot of heat that's what the same similar type of impact happened with dinosaur so someone i think in the last uh, <clears throat> sorry it might extend a bit half an hour so in last uh, q and a session asked about why temperature cooled down that is not because of an asteroid but the impact asteroid had on our uh, planet at that time is what uh, made that impact so a lot of dust uh, sun was blocked a lot of things happened at that time so uh, it's again a history so these are some of the known craters one crater is there uh, lona crater in india which is perfect just in case if you want to go and explore in maharashtra i will come to some of the pics <coughs> so uh, this is my uh, microscope okay this is just a small one very cheap uh, with which i just uh, try to analyze any rocks what is there or whatever collections i have so it give me some fine detail this was taken by a microscope only uh, the this middle image right just give me a minute i think my screen got hang sorry my screen is hanging just give me a minute i'm just sharing my screen again <clears throat> yeah so basically uh, many have asked how to detect and uh, how to find out meteorites is not that easy a lot of videos you can find so metal detectors are used uh, which has uh, these coils electromagnetic coils which basically pass on the electromagnetic uh, radiations and then waves basically and then uh, if any metal metallic property is there in any rock or anything including any metal also it will respond basic magnets can be used for small chunks if they are just lying on the surface uh, after uh, astro we tried is there uh, we bring it home we or in the lab we clean it with acid because of lot of uh, impurities and interactions have happened we cut them we slice them for further analysis which i personally will not prefer this is a palisade which is really very uh, Uh, important uh, and rare uh, sony iron meteorite which originated when the, even the any planet's uh, core was not solidified so it has uh, impacted and collided with it when it was liquid form or it was just solidifying maybe outer core basically so this is the how uh, people uh, this is from meteorite uh, they are a good friend of mine basically so uh, what happens is when a meteorite hits the earth it is going in a particular trajectory it will not go like this side or that side randomly right if it is hitting in a straight environment depending on the atmospheric pressure uh, heat and everything wind atmosphere it will go and in a linear trajectory so wherever it goes it will keep on throwing some of the other chunks so that's how they uh, create a map okay this city it has fallen it must have gone via this whoever has observed the, the those particular sightings then they uh, use the magnetic coils and everything to bounce back and uh, get the uh, waves basically confirmation this is just a preliminary part this doesn't mean that a uh, meteorite is discovered so uh, the one uh, meteorite which i was showing is from this side core and mantle boundary where it collided palisite basically they are very rare and they are kind of a gem and uh, uh, priceless basically so this is how uh, spectrum analysis is done asteroid is uh, uh, kept in an accelerator spectroscopy started graph and all uh, what material it is showing high peaks low peaks then a laser beam or a beam of protons is fired regularly constantly after a few seconds and all these properties come into picture because every uh, beam which collides with a uh, soft material or water molecules or uh, iron nickel has a different set of response spectroscopy response <clears throat> so this is a, a sample from the same lab which is there which is even uh, uh, earlier than the our earth and uh, solar system formation 
this i am taking because this was recently there last month in the uh, news news channels also so in rajasthan uh, sanchor uh, this 2.8 kg meteorite and one more thing is there meteorite will be uh, of same size if you compare with the earth rock meteorite will always be of uh, 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 more weight compared to the earth rock earth rock will be uh, uh, Four scope will not give me that much uh, clarity. I have one that one also. I know uh, what you are trying to say, but uh, it does not give me. I need to purchase a new one, Celestron or something. I need to invest money. Actually, sorry, I just randomly read the Q and A. So uh, still, a lot of analysis has to be done. But initial says yes. Uh, there are a lot of beautiful markings over here, which clearly tells that it has entered our atmosphere and it has gone through that atmospheric. Uh, metallic uh, interaction with the atmosphere so a lot of study has to be done uh, in india about this particular meteorite or the previous hits this is what i was talking about lona crater uh, this is intact there is one temple also uh, many people go for temple many people go for this this as a site there are few people or tourist guides uh, who will guide you this is the only crater formed by a meteorite impact in india uh, there is one shiva crater but uh, not much information is there around rajasthan area it uh, basically uh, impacted uh, the surface of the earth and made a hole that was 1.8 km wide which is huge and 150 m deep and recently it was in uh, news also because uh, it has acidic property basaltic properties this lake water so again from green to i think pink all of a sudden the color has changed acidic color <clears throat> so uh, this is the prl lab where all the analysis just like what i showed earlier that was of usa so this is how the analysis of uh, it is done again link is there uh, many are samples are there in kolkata basically i will have to skip some part there are different type of meteor meteorites sony story iron and iron uh, which have different compositions and uh, there are different ways also to Uh, check these meteorites. Maybe again, I will take up later on. One uh, fact I want to tell you about this is this is a oriented uh, meteorite uh, cone shape. Basically, what happens is some of the uh, they they are very costly if you go outside India and purchase them compared to all heavier ones also uh, carbon caseous also. Why? Because they have survived the atmosphere such a way that they did not disintegrate integrate that much. and it formed a cone shape because it is resisting the atmosphere the atmospheric pressure and heat it is burning and it is still uh, basically coming and surviving so that is how our apollo scientists and engineers nasa also got an idea why not have our shuttle space uh, sorry a uh, shuttle capsule which reenters the earth atmosphere with such a uh, huge speed and velocity and uh, enters our uh, Uh, atmosphere to have such a space uh, sorry such a uh, uh, shape basically that's how uh, all our space shuttles which reenter have such a uh, flat and circular kind of a disk space basically so this is the size comparison of uh, four west and all other asteroids bigger ones series is obviously there i will have to skip many things uh, <clears throat> so this is how the first asteroid was discovered series by a telescope and it has been observed 6494 times a lot of observation and measurement is required otherwise we will never come to a conclusion whether it is a planet or and some other normal rock uh, which is space rock which is passing through that's how it's a spherical like what dr stuart also told uh, that's how we came to a uh, conclusion it's a dwarf planet i will skip this is how the moon micro meteorites uh, have hit and uh, made the changes in the lava hit uh, mare for the areas of low uh, areas and the high uh, mountain areas so a lot of uh, bombardment has happened on our moon also <clears throat> so i will just come to how observation is done without remote telescope or isc program so many uh, friends of mine they have uh, different type of telescopes obviously uh, these are the remote telescope pan stars and they are also working all the time catalina survey sky survey and this is the using a space missions basically 
<clears throat> so you have three options either to use your own telescope 14 inch i have a 8 inch celestron that will not help much with respect to asteroids it will look just like a tiny particle but still i will be able to manage if i am living in a, a better light pollution uh, area far away so uh, he is a good friend of mine uh, he has been uh, doing observations since 1990s when i was a kid i was not even aware what telescope and how exactly it works and all those things so uh, lauren ball basically he has uh, provided observation for 107 asteroid which is huge and he has discovered them via these telescopes me telescopes and all these are all uh, 14 inch i think and he has an observatory code everyone has a observatory code <clears throat> so you can go to wikipedia lorency ball you can search and you will find a lot of details so the largest asteroid he has discovered is 7.5 miles in diameter and trojan asteroid what he discovered uh, is what the largest asteroid is and the smallest one is 0.4 miles <clears throat> so this is how he still does not use any computer properly he makes his observations over here and uh, that's how he observes every time so uh, this is another one a good friend of ours northwold uh, branch uh, they are based out of london uk so uk has a very windy weather throughout the year and a lot of rainy unexpected rains are there like in india we have seasons there is only one season which is windy windy and rainy so still they manage and they have discovered two asteroids under their name plus they have helped uh, iau mtc to discover or uh, rather give more measurements accurate orbital measurements for many more uh, asteroids so uh, this one more thing uh, he is also a good friend of mine abert rab basically he is the one who has developed uh, this astrometrica what we use today there you can create another tool also in python and all but uh, he is the one behind the uh, all alone behind the astrometrica and he is an explorer also so uh, basically uh, when an asteroid is discovered and its all its orbit is unknown or not detected we know okay this part this particular object was there but in order to calculate the orbit lot of measurements are done so approximately 50 measurements are spread over 24 hours to know the orbit very well plus iu mpc also keeps a track where it is going when it is visible when it is not visible so that a uh, proper orbit can be calculated it takes a lot of days lot of years to complete this one it is going to end the session so this is one of the protection ways uh, atlas uh, my friend is working in this project so they are alerting nasa and other space agencies uh, i think i should skip all this uh, so there is a planetary uh, this is uh, some of the last slides defense coordination office uh, it's a combination of multiple esa and uh, nasa and everyone so they are tracking all the near earth uh, or potentially hazardous objects so this is their uh, analysis and how they are going to mitigate and everything so there is a launch uh, i think uh, it's uh, going to be delayed dart by nasa and other agencies so it is going to make a deflection on the asteroid by bombarding it so uh, what will happen is that uh, dimidos uh, didymos uh, a and b are there b is smaller one which is uh, just rotating so it will make an impact so that 10 minutes or some deflection is there its orbit will uh, change basically this is just a testing purpose <clears throat> so uh, i i will have to skip everything this is spectral analysis of normal stars and infrared how asteroid wave length changes the flux so this was the example what i was telling earlier this is the size comparison <clears throat> these are the sensors and uh, solar arrays which are going to be there on the dark and how it is going to impact uh i won't be able to show the video again uh, it's uh, by shiva pn one of our team members who has how he made a uh, provisional discovery so basically uh, what i want to say is that uh, we have this program in collaboration with iasc iasc is nothing but a combination and collaboration of multiple 
space agencies plus uh, participants and uh, scientists. So basically, it's a mathematics uh, Hardin Simon University. <clears throat> so what happens is that uh, uh, pan stars is what they use. They even use Catalina Sky Survey, but typically pan stars is providing them image on monthly basis. So I would request everyone to participate in Spaceport India asteroid search, uh, which is again going to start resume in the month of August. Participation nominations can be done. So there are uh, two, three already reserved uh, slots which have been allocated earlier. And there are 12 more slots or 10 slots. So within one slot, three team members at max can participate. There would be a set of uh, multiple images, 20 images or so. You will have to analyze using the same astrometrica. MPC report has to be correctly submitted to IESC. They will shortlist or preliminary what we call. They will submit to IEU MPC. MPC will finally decide whether it is a confirmed or provisional discovery or not. If it is not, it will be rejected. You will be, ISA will be informed. There is no such uh, discovery made. So these are the uh, Spaceport India to confirm that 60 preliminary asteroid discoveries uh, are there as of now. So we will start with the Q&A session if uh, there are any. <clears throat> I think my team members were able to actually help you out during the chat itself. Uh, oh, you have a class at seven. You can maybe uh, quit. Anyways, recording will be there. So, I, Naveen, Vasha, uh, would you like to? I think most of them have been answered. Uh, what is the name of first form asteroid? Uh, I think I have already uh, mentioned series 1801. So, is it true that Tumska event had him? Explosion equal to three or eight times. 133 nuclear, uh, nuclear strikes, uh, I've already mentioned, right? I think uh, my team has taken care of Q&A, right? So there is just uh, one thing, just quick wind up. There are a few questions uh, which those who want to uh, just uh, end the session, they can uh, just uh, log off basically. There is no hard and fast rule. We are just almost at the end of the uh, this session. <clears throat> Sorry, time was less. My slides were a bit more. That's the reason. So uh, how last time this was asked by uh, with Dr. Stewart, how asteroid and their observation can be useful in science? I think we have very well explained. They pose danger to us, threat to us. That's the reason. And a lot of mineralogy and uh, study has to be done. Any danger to of asteroids to humanity? Yes, it is there. Any physical characteristics? We have already discussed. Uh, normal rock. Again, I have made a comparison. Further, I can go ahead uh, in next sessions. So, uh, yeah, there was one question I just want to clarify. Can petroleum be found on the asteroid? See, uh, you have to understand that petroleum is a fossil fuel. We are just uh, sucking it out and using it like anything, but they are from fossils. We have not yet, uh, or we have not been able to explore much of asteroids. So we we are not very sure whether asteroids have any such fossil remains, which is, I don't know, not even possible as of now, what we are observing so far, right? So, uh, this question is a kind of a petroleum is found on the earth, not even Mars or anything. Obviously, there are microorganisms which have been found. So, but still, uh, uh, this question, I hope I was able to answer. Uh, okay, why are looking at asteroid metroid? I have already given the classification. It is not possible, actually. Uh, why asteroids are of regular shapes? Uh, I think Dr. Stewart has already explained that very well. Any asteroid bigger than the Earth, we haven't seen that so far. Ceres also is uh, comparatively uh, smaller than compared to our moon, basically. So I will wind up this session, sorry. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will upload the videos which were made by Cavalier soon, which gives an introduction. I could not review them, which gives an introduction. Uh, we are going to start with the internship for kids for school kids and as well as for collegiates, short term and uh, long term, basically, on in astronomy. <clears throat> Plus, we have this uh, collaboration. I just want to show you one thing, one last thing. Sorry, uh, just give me a second. 
So Solo or SLU, basically, it's a US-based uh, online telescope which provides a lot of uh, details. So we have a tie-up with them now. Uh, they, uh, we have a tie-up with respect to, just in case if you don't have any telescope, which most of us don't have, and uh, you are living in such a <coughs> city area where it is hardly possible to pull out telescope and do some observation. So basically, we have come up with this uh, SLU uh, space. It is their idea. We are just tied up partnership. So what we are doing is uh, we are giving uh, uh, partnerships. So Spaceport India Club has been created. I will just show you one thing. Just today, a few minutes ago, it has been created, which is a good news. So this is dedicated to us, basically, if you are able to see. So with internship, uh, just in case if you want this membership or membership plus internship, it is up to you. Costs are different for both because uh, this is something I have to directly pay to them. And they, instead of $20 for a year membership, they are allowing us to have a membership for $10 only. Right? Uh, just give me a second. So basically, they are allowing us. So all the quests, uh, they have different quests, like formation of star, exploring nebulas and uh, messier objects and planets, so solar, uh, canary island, uh, different telescopes are there. So it will be aligned to our internship, whatever topic for a week we are going to choose. Based on that, they are going to have this quest on our request. It will be different also. It will be very exciting. We will have a group. We will have live star parties wherein you guys will interact more with us, ask questions, learn with us how to explore and how to observe the night sky. Plus, their expert astronomers also will be coming on special in events, basically, and uh, interacting with us. So solo membership is there for you, which is open. SLU membership along with the uh, internship is there. So we'll be uh, uh, rolling out uh, all the details soon, very soon. <clears throat> So that's it from our side. And uh, really, thanks for your patience for having such a long session, right? So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, session. Just in case, if you have any feedback, just provide it to us because we want to improve and we want to work with you all, right? So that's it from my side and my team. Uh, thanks a lot and have a nice day. Ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.